more video card and more processor. Let's go ahead and see how AMD and Intel compete against each other now. The AMD 64 is once again being pitted up against Intel's Pentium 4 processor, only this time AMD chip is going to be the Athlon X2, 3800 plus, it's the only one that I've got, and the Pentium 4D clocked at 3.4 gigahertz with 2 megabytes per processor core for a total of 4 megabytes of level 2 cache, uh, socket 775 on a uh, VIA chipset based AGP board just to make this interesting or at least try to make these somewhat similar to each other. Uh, this board unfortunately does not run dual channel memory as I found out. It's only single channel but as you'll see in the benchmarks it doesn't appear like that's going to really matter a whole lot. The motherboard for the AMD in this case is once again the ABIT AV8 board which we used in the last video against the Pentium 4 Extreme Edition, uh, only this time we're using the X2 processor, obviously. Uh, same RAM, Castellan C2, and this time we're going to be using the EVGA NVIDIA 7800GS AGP 8X graphics card with 256 megabytes of GDDR3. 3D Mark 2001, 3, and 5 do appear to be multi-threaded. I checked this just to see. And so it should be an adequate test for these processors to test the multi-threaded capabilities of these to see what kind of improvements they have, if any, between the two of them. And Doom 3, Quake 4, and Unreal Tournament 3 uh, are also multi-threaded, so it should be a good test here between these processors. I, however, did not check if Aquamark is multi-threaded, but eh, that's all right. Ada 64 Extreme, you can see the CPU Queen, the Pentium D, is scoring 5,066 marks here versus the Athlon's 7,106 marks. The Athlon definitely has an edge in the CPU performance here. Floating point test, we can see that the Intel Pentium D is scoring 1,161 marks and the Athlon 64 is scoring 1,183 marks, so they're pretty dang close to each other there. Memory read, the Pentium D is 5,128 megabytes a second versus the Athlon 64's 6262 and of course this is because of the dual channel uh, benefit that the Athlon 64 has in this test. On the right test the Pentium 4D is scoring 3130 megabytes a second and the AMD 64 is scoring 5754 megabytes a second again because of the dual channel advantage that the Athlon 64 has in this test. 3D Mark 2001 you can see the Athlon XP is scoring 23735 3D Marks Whereas the Pentium 4D is scoring 22582 marks. So they're pretty close to each other there. The Athlon 64 is just barely edging it out. 3D Mark 2003, you can see the Pentium 4D is scoring 13,810 3D Mark. And the Athlon 64 is coming in at 13,286 marks. So again, we're pretty dang close to one another here. And finally, 3D Mark 2005, the Athlon XP is scoring 6,456 3D Marks versus the Pentium 4D's 6,518 Marks. So once again, they're pretty much statistically uh, right neck and neck at each other here. Neither of these chips is really outpacing the other in these tests. Doom 3 at 1024 by 768 Pentium 4D is scoring 110.4 frames per second. And in the case of Doom, the Athlon 64 is edging out the Pentium 4 here with 122.7 frames per second. Probably has to do with the dual channel memory. Crank up the resolution of 1280 by 1024. You can see that the Pentium 4D is scoring 95.6 frames per second. And the Athlon XP is scoring 99.2 frames per second. So it's edging it out a little bit here, but not by much really. Quake, 1024 by 768, 106.84 frames per second for the Athlon 64 X2 versus the Pentium 4D's 90.95 frames per second here. Quake 4 at 1280 scores 90.83 on the Pentium 4D and 104.18 frames per second for the Athlon 64. In Aquamark here you can see that the Athlon XP is scoring 77,770 Aquamarks. The Pentium 4D is scoring 74,719 aqua marks. So once again, they're pretty close to each other. The Athlon 64 is just barely edging out the Pentium 4D. And once again, that's probably because of the dual channel memory advantage. 
So let's take a look now at Unreal Tournament 2007, which runs the UT3 engine. And you can see there's only about one and a half frames per second separating the two processors in the correct map. Hydrosis the same as seen again here between these chips, although the Pentium uh, 4D is falling behind a little bit here, but not really by much. It's, again, statistical margin of error, they are identical. In the vertebrae map here, you can see we've got about a three frame per second increase with the Pentium 4D over the Athlon 64. And I couldn't really tell you why. But the different maps definitely give you a little bit of a different result. In this case, the vertebrae map definitely did give us a much different result here. This one gives a much wider separation between these two processors. Well, these two processors have been pitted together. The benchmark results are in, and you've just seen those. These processors appear to be pretty much well matched with each other, at least in this particular test. The reason I say that I don't think the dual channel advantage is being realized here is because it doesn't look to me like there's a whole lot of difference between these two processors when we're actually looking at gaming performance here. It doesn't seem like the gaming performance is improved much at all with dual channel memory. So that might be a case where these processors are just not fast enough to really need dual channel memory, which is something that I might have to explore later on. This is kind of a hard time to compare these processors to because 775 came out on the Intel platform with DDR2 memory and PCI Express. And to keep this somewhat sane as far as the comparison goes, I'm running AGP, very similar chipsets. And you can see that the VIA memory controller for the Pentium 4D on the socket 775 is not that bad. It actually seems to keep up pretty well. You know, single channel RAM, it's scoring about half of what the Athlon uh, 64 is scoring. So, you know, they I think VIA actually did a pretty dang good job with their memory controller here. I think this is also one of the last chipsets that VIA ever made, for at least for uh, computer chipsets goes, desktop chipsets go. <clears throat> and uh, pretty much um, the only other thing I can think of is Enforce, or NVIDIA did make an Enforce 4 chipset for socket 775. So that would be maybe a little bit more of a legitimate comparison between these two because that would give us DDR2. It would also give us PCI Express, but I don't have one of those boards. So, and I don't have a socket uh, 939 board with the Enforce 4 either. So, and I don't really feel like paying money for those, quite honestly. So, <clears throat> more testing will have to be done. I'm kind of thinking about the dual channel thing. I might have to do that for another video. I've got one last gasp for the AGP slot, and that is a socket AM2 motherboard with AGP. Again, it's a VIA chipset and it has DDR2 memory on it. So we can maybe try to see if there's really any kind of a limitation to that AGP port. It'd be kind of interesting to throw a whole heck of a lot of CPU power at an AGP card and just see uh, well, how far we can take it. But that'll be for another time. I don't have anything faster than the 7800GS right now. And uh, the fastest HEP card that I've come across is a 5450, a Radeon 5450. I did come across one or two of those on eBay, and they were over 100 bucks. So um, <clears throat> the 4670, I don't know if they, I can't recall if they made a 4850, but the 4670, 3850, those would be fine. A lot of people said that the 3850 is really no slower than the 4670 or the 4850, I think. So, um on the AGP platform anyway. I think they made 4850 when I was researching that. Anyway, I don't remember now for sure. But So anyway, this will conclude this benchmark. It was a lot of fun to run. But uh, <clears throat> other than the exploring the AGP thing, I think we're going to get back to something a little bit more vintage. Because this is about, I think, as new as I'm going to take these face-off videos. Because we're getting into about 2005 era stuff here, and I still work on that stuff. And there's still people that use this stuff on a daily basis so especially when you can start getting the AM2 stuff you know we're talking about 2009 stuff here 2010 stuff so we're pretty recent there so um, I got some vintage computers to look at here and throw up on the channel so 
We'll get back to the vintage stuff soon here, all right? Take care, everyone. Peace out.